In this video we are going to take a closer look at the new 500 points game format introduced with the Arcs of Omen, the so-called boarding actions. In the first part we will go through all the relevant rules for Space Marines and the Death Watch featured in the first two Arcs of Omen books released so far, named Abaddon and Angron. In the second part, we will then look into some example lists for playing boarding actions with the Death Watch. Lastly, there will be a quick wrap up of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Fun fact, because of shipping delays on GW's side, I received Arcs of Omen Angron before I received Arcs of Omen Abaddon. As a result, I am doing a single review covering both books at once. For the purposes of this video, I will also be focusing on the relevant rules for playing Death Watch, meaning that other factions, as well as the individual missions, will not be part of this release. In a nutshell, Abaddon has the base rules, while Angron covers faction-specific rules adaptations and enhancements, as well as additional boarding action stratagems. This means that GW implemented a progressive rule system for boarding actions, where each successive book will add an additional layer of complexity. For complete beginners, it can make perfect sense to start with Abaddon only for the first handful of games, even if additional books will already be available. Once you feel comfortable with any given set of rules, one can then advance by adding the next book and its set of rules. Over the course of this video, we will be diving into handling CP, performing actions, boarding action enhancements, mastering a boarding patrol and playing boarding action games, which make the main bulk of the rules, as well as a quick look at the missions themselves. Starting with CP, very much like we already know it from the Arcs of Omen GT mission pack, each player will get one CP at the start of each command phase, which can then be spent on stratagems. The starting CP is one. However, here is the first big change when compared to other game formats, the stratagems available are very limited. For the Abaddon book, only the generic command reroll, counter-offensive and insane bravery stratagems are available. The Angron book then adds faction-specific stratagems. For Space Marines, these are transhuman, only in death does do the end, strength of the Emperor and steady advance. For the Death Watch specifically, good news here, we also get Brotherhood of Veterans for 1 CP. Why 1 CP only? We will get to this in just a moment, but the short answer is that you will never be able to apply it to more than 5 models, hence the adjustment makes sense. In fact, I am even a little surprised that GW thought this one through for once. Moving on to actions, here we have 4 different rules. Set to Overwatch and Set to Defend, which are the boarding action versions of similar rules that can be found in the Warhammer 40k main game, and I think GW did a really great job turning these into actions. We then also have Secure Sight, which can only be done by Objective Secured Units, and basically makes Objective sticky, already hinting at the importance of troops in this game mode. Lastly, we then also have Operate Hatchway, which allows the opening or closing of a hatchway. Basically, the only way to see or move through a hatchway is for it to be open. Moving on to boarding action enhancements, in this game mode, there are no warlord traits and relics. Shocking, I know. Instead, your warlord can make a single pick of the so-called boarding action enhancements. In the Abaddon book, there are a bunch of generic ones that range from two additional starting CP, rerolling wound rolls, or even completing the opera hatchway action when they are being selected to make a normal move. The Angron book then adds three more for Space Marines, namely the Imperium's Plate, adding plus one to attacks and charge rolls, Masters of War giving objective secure to a unit, and Artificial Armor giving a 2 plus save and a 4 plus symbol. 
The Death Watch specific one is Light of Angels, which was already previewed on Warhammer Community. It is a once per battle ability that allows the bearer of a unit within 6 inches to be placed in reserves and then being redeployed the next turn anywhere more than 9 inches away from enemy models and this can be done in addition to any other units arriving from reserves. Kind of similar to the Deathwatch teleport shenanigans we already know well from matched play. While Deathwatch has great relics and warlord traits in the supplement, the very limited starting CP of 1 would prevent us from pre-investing anyway and as such I think this is fair game. Due to the Deathwatch also having the ability to bring the majority of troops along, thanks to the kill teams we can easily look into something like the generic plus 2 CP enhancement which pairs well with having Brotherhood of Veterans available for every turn. Moving on to Mustering a Boarding Patrol, which covers the basics of list building. In this game format, we can take 0 to 1 HQs, 0 to 3 troops and 0 to 3 elites. So basically, there are no mandatory choices. If we take characters, one of those has to be the Warlord, if not, a champion model such as a sergeant can be picked instead. This means that technically you can run a 500 points list without any characters and still get the enhancement. Anyway, there are further restrictions regarding datasheets, aka no monster, vehicle, chum pack, cavalry, biker or fly keyword. Now, upon mentioning keywords, I should have the attention of every Deathwatch player. I will get back to this in just a moment. First things first, if a unit has a minimum size of less than 5, only that minimum can be taken. If it has a minimum of 5 and a max of 10, then either the minimum size of 5 can be taken or the maximum of 10, which then has to be split into equally sized boarding squads of 5. This replaces the combat squad ability of Space Marines. Furthermore, the Angron book allows a few additional data sheets such as a Primarch, a single assault squad as a fast attack choice, one heavy support choice which can be either Eradicators or Hellblasters, though only a max of 5 of the latter. We could also take one squad of company veterans at the size of 5 if a captain is present, or one squad of servitors if a tech marine is included in our list. If a unit has the outflank ability, it won't be available for boarding actions. Now, returning to the previously mentioned keywords and kill teams, does that mean that the Death Watch can go wild with mixed units? Bad news first. GW released a FAQ for boarding actions, which is available as a free download on Warhammer Community. There it says that Deathwatch kill teams are only allowed to include datasheets that are also allowed outside of kill teams, aka elites plus the few exceptions previously mentioned. In practice, this means the following for our kill teams. For the Spectre's kill team, we are only allowed to take Infiltrators, Incursors and Reavers. For the Forest kill team, we are only allowed to take Intercessors and Hellblasters. We could also take Assault Intercessors of course, but no one wants those anyway. Because of the FAQ, the Infantry Outriders are unfortunately out of reach. For the Indometer kill team, we are only allowed to include Aggressors and Eradicators, with the Inceptors once again being out of reach due to the FAQ. For the Proteus kill team, we can add Deathwatch Terminators and Vanguard Veterans, as these are elite picks and therefore legal. The Veteran Bikers on the other hand are restricted due to the FAQ, even when they are infantry, just like the Outriders. So does that mean that there is no cheesing with kill teams left at all? Well, the Van Wets is where it gets interesting. Their original datasheet is legal for boarding actions, as the jump pack and its corresponding keywords are optional war gear, and because models added to a kill team do not retain any of their original keywords, a vanguard veteran with a jump pack in a Proteus kill team will gain neither the jump pack 
nor the fly keyword for as long as they are mixed with at least one non van wet model. While it is obviously not intended to bring jump pack benefits to boarding actions, I think a case can be made for a 12 inch moving van wet with a jump pack at the price of 3 extra points, which might come in handy in the far smaller boarding action games. Would I recommend running it? Not if you are going to lose sleep or friends over it. Moving on to the boarding action games themselves, here the steps for setting up the game are explained in detail, similar to how we already know it from the GT mission pad. One important difference here is the deploy army step. If a unit has a pre-battle rule that allows it to be set up anywhere, it must instead do within 6 inches of that unit's entry zone. One such example would be concealed positions. Then lastly a word on the missions themselves. Similar to how we know it from the GT mission pack, a large part is about capturing objective markers, but what we have to keep in mind here is that making them sticky through the secure site action is only available to objective secured units, making troops very important. With the basic rules out of the way, how do we best go about creating a Deathwatch 500 points list for boarding action? As far as I'm concerned, there are the following considerations. First of all, Deathwatch is an elite style army, meaning that it does not scale particularly well at lower points games. This is further reinforced by the recent price bump to the Deathwatch veterans. Yes, they can get a lot of free war gear, but they are now 27 base points per model, which means fewer potential bodies in a 500 points game. On the bright side of things, close quarter encounters favor melee style of units, and the Proteus skill team in particular can be specced very nicely into that. Furthermore, with no access to our powerful relics and warlord traits, having self-sufficient kill teams with for instance access to storm shields and a variety of other powerful war gear is another plus. I also think that Arcs of Omen Angron giving access to Brotherhood of Veterans for 1 CP as well as Transhuman makes the extra 2 starring CP an excellent enhancement choice for the Death Watch. Then lastly, troops are as important as ever and we can of course do these well thanks to our kill teams and I also think that a deployment head start from the altered concealed positions is a great benefit. Originally, when I designed my first boarding action list, I wanted to pack as many powerful datasheets in as possible. As a result, I went with an Indomitus Captain, a modified Clangby style Proteus skill team, as well as an Aggressor Squad. Among the HQs, Space Marine Captains are excellent in close combat, and I like this particular model because he's a good mix out of cost, damage and some extra protection against mortals on the shield instead of the usual 4 plus invul redundancy that captains have due to their iron halo ability. He's also primaries, allowing him to make use of transhuman. For the Proteus scale team, I went for a black shield, double terminators and double heavy thunderhammer van wets with jump packs for maximum cheese. And again, just leave them out if it creates any issues, the kill team works perfectly fine without it. Why all the hammers? Because I am playing against like-minded tryhards. I will get back to this in a moment. On the regular wets, I put combi flamers and storm shields, another variant would be power fists for maximum melee output, though I like the prospect of special issue ammunition bolters plus auto hitting flamers in close quarters, especially with the boarding action adjusted overwatch. Anyway, these will have to be split into two boarding squads, and they make great targets for brotherhood of veterans. Lastly, this left me with just about below 100 points, for which I considered an aggressor squad as ideal, good mix of ranged and melee output. Either Boltstorm or Flamestorm gauntlets could work fine here. While I would consider this list pretty powerful in raw output, I also found it to be a little slow in practice. The danger here is simply being outplayed by a more agile army with more units. As a result, I adjusted the list by dropping the aggressors and replacing them with an incursor squad instead, which can make use of the concealed positions ability. The van wets get swapped for more terminators, adding in some extra durability on the Proteus skill team instead, and keeping the list cheese free. 
This also gives us 3 squads with OPSEC. More overall speed at the cost of damage. Ultimately, I think the main question for Deathwatch is whether an expensive kill team like the Proteus is worth it compared to simply running more bodies. As I previously mentioned, I might also be biased because I felt the need to bring a lot of hammers and hence up the price of an already pricey kill team even further. But even when going for cheaper loadouts, how do we end up with enough spare points to actually bring something useful? Due to the limitation of only a single character being allowed, this is actually not that simple, because otherwise we could just have tried to squeeze in a company champion, which is an excellent bang for the buck. But this made me think about simply dropping the captain, as much as I like the hit reroll aura, and go with the mansion company champion as a decent close combat character instead. On the Proteus skill team, the hammers get replaced by 3 power fists on the wets and the black shield, and one terminator has to make room for another death watch veteran. The two van vets are back and get a hand flamer and a power sword each, the latter can be replaced by a lightning claw when not going for jump packs. This just about allows us to squeeze in both the incursors and the aggressor squad, ending up at exactly 500 points. This maximizes the amount of bodies and brings plenty of OPSEC, making it better at dealing with more regular lists rather than being tailored towards taking out Terminators and Gravis models. My advice here would be to experiment on your own and bring whatever style works best for your local meta. But I think at least one primary status sheet should be present because of transhuman, it strikes me as a waste to heavily invest into a primary skill team with far more inflexible loadout. The Proteus also does close combat best by far. This early into the game format, I expect to flip around the list over the course of further games. All in all, while I keep having my reservations about the downscaling of Deathwatch at lower points, I think GW has managed to create a really fun game mode that can serve as an easy introduction for anyone interested in picking up Warhammer 40k and slowly working up to the 2k points big game mode. While it is unfortunate, though perfectly understandable, that GW has reined in our kill team shenanigans by locking out bikers, inceptors and even eliminators for good through an FAQ, we can still get a small advantage through 12 inches movement van wets mixed into a kill team and the Proteus kill team in general is very well suited for these more close combat oriented boarding actions. One thing also worth mentioning is that setting up the board with the dedicated board in action terrain takes a lot of time and it can get really frustrating when playing several missions in a row. Be prepared to invest a bit of time into this, but other than that, boarding actions get my thumbs up and I am looking forward to what future books will be adding to it. As I am making this video, the next two books, Vaster and Farsight, have already been previewed. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the Arcs of Omen boarding actions, a narrative game mode locked at 500 points, with quite some rules and datasheet limitations. I think especially for beginners, it is easy to get into, as there won't be any stratagem overload, and even when starting Deathwatch, the limitations for adding datasheet to kill teams might work in favor of learning both the game and the faction. For a Spectre's kill team, we can take Infiltrators, Incursors and Reavers. For the Forest kill team, we can take Intercessors and Hellblasters. We could also take Assault Intercessors, but don't do that. For the Indometer kill team, we can take Heavy Intercessors, Aggressors and Eradicators. Then lastly, for the Proteus kill team, we can take Deathwatch Veterans, Deathwatch Terminators and Vanguard Veterans. I would recommend taking one Proteus kill team at the very least. Due to our excellent Brotherhood of Veterans stratagem being available at 1 CP, I think starting with 2 extra CP as an enhancement can make sense, but this is of course also dependent on the overall list. While I initially tried to pack in as much punch as possible, I really ended up liking some Phobos models with concealed positions for a head start. As future Arcs of Omen books will be released, I will no doubt be returning to covering this game mode, which I consider a great addition to the overall Warhammer 40k hobby. 
So that's it for the Ark's Vomond boarding action game mode and its first two books, Abaddon and Dangron. Have you guys already been playing boarding actions? And what is your take on it? Any lists you want to share? Any future boarding action topics you would like me to look into? Let me know in the comments. Then finally, if you made it this far and I still have your attention, if you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. For that, I have both a coffee as well as a Patreon page, links are in the description. Furthermore, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. As always, thank you very much for watching guys. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.